So this is Practical Const Expert. If you saw my talk that I did with Ben Dean, which was Const Expert All the Things at CppCon, this is definitely a different talk. This is the practical application of Const Expert to a real code base, which, if you know anything about my talks, is ChiScript. There's no surprise there. But it's the lessons that I learned when applying Const Expert. So in case you don't know who I am, co-host of CVPCast and host of C++ Weekly, my YouTube channel. And I do training and I'm, am available if you are interested in having training at your organization. So I, this slide was up here yesterday. You all are so awesome about not sitting in the very back, except for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to do a quick introduction to Constexper, um, hopefully, if my, there we go. I'm not going to show any rules or anything yet, but is this a valid Constexper function? Raise your hand if, if, raise your hand if you think this is not a valid Constexper function for some reason. OK, good. So we have now done a recursive implementation of the Fibonacci sequence. This is everyone's favorite way to test the efficiency of something. And I still don't really understand why. But is this a valid const expert function? Does anyone have a problem with this const expert function? Which standard? As of C14, this is fine. And what changed that you wanted to? Yeah, multiple code paths effectively in C14 are allowed. But C14 allows pretty much anything. So we've decided to make this a linear calculation of Fibonacci because we don't like recursion. Is this still valid? as a const expert function? Yes. Any dissenters? Just checking. OK. So C14, this is fine. All right. We've changed it now. Instead of doing our exchange of values, we're still using standard exchange. Is this a valid const expr function? Does anyone have any feedback? What is standard exchange const expr? What is standard? Okay, let's let's walk through this. We're calling it with Fibonacci of zero. So, is this? An acceptable, and, and we're assigning it to a const expert value, so we are evaluating it in a const expert context. This OK? Maybe? Shrug of shoulders? OK. Yes, this is OK. Now we're assigning it, we're calling it with a value of 1. This is, so the first case. Um, both the first, the zeroth, and the oneth case, if you will, are executing line two, where they're saying, well, this value is less than two, so I'm going to return the value. Now, as soon as the value is equal to two, now we have to deal with line six. Because up to this point, the compiler wasn't trying to execute this standard exchange in the const expert context. Although, I will point out that the current version of GCC, I think, current version of one of the compilers I tested, um, rejects this code in all cases um, because it does a poor job of tracing the code. But, so in this case, when we pass into, now we have to get to that standard exchange. And this matters because this, in this context for context, 
standard exchange is not const expr. So that was the, the question that was being asked by some people. So now this fails to compile because we have passed in a parameter that causes it to execute a code path that can't be executed in a const expr context. Is that acceptable to everyone, whether or not it's ideal? Does anyone have any questions? OK. So we're going to talk about actually putting to use const expr. And I'm going to start with the definition of a literal type. Does everyone know what a literal type is? You all read the standard over breakfast every morning, right? That's <laughs> Some people, it looks like I think, actually do. Um, so raise your hand if you do know what a literal type is. OK, few people, 20 or something like that. Well, this is, well, the definition's here, so I guess you could have cheated and read the definition and said, yes, of course I know what a literal type is. But possibly things, scalar, reference, an array of literal, and, you know, these are all lots of words. But these are, I think, the important things that we need to know is this one right here. It has a trivial destructor. Now, I don't have the slide for this. Did you see my CVPCon talk of const expr all the things? What does it take to make a trivial, a destructor non-trivial? Like, anyone want to yell anything out here? Yeah, go ahead. Any, Any definition. OK, so don't give it a destructor. You've made it a non-literal type at this point. What's that? You yes, you can default it, yes. So yeah, again, this is all the like, all the words here, but it has, must have a, a trivial destructor, and I am looking for words that I do not expect to see. I mean, that I expect to see that I don't see. Well, anyhow. So that, and it must have a, it must have at least one const expert constructor if it's not a built-in type. Yeah, it's just, just, there's so much in the standard on this stuff. It's really easy to understand, right? So it implies in line is what I want you to take away from this slide, just for the record. Const or specifier implies in line. And here we go. Const expert function. So getting back to the stuff that we were just looking at, const expr function shall not be virtual. Its return type shall be a literal type, and each of its parameter types should be a literal type, which is why I had this rough introduction to literal. And it must not contain an asm definition. It must not contain a go-to statement. It must not uh, contain an identifier label or a try block to be a const expr function. So everything that we just walked through was really simple. It doesn't have any of these asm statements or go-tos or labels in them. Although, being someone who's familiar with the standard but not like someone who knows all of the standard, I'm still slightly confused as to why a switch statement is allowed to work because isn't that the same thing as an a label? Is it? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> Ask someone in the front row. <laughs> OK. I might have had more of the standard up here than I needed. Context of specifier used on object declaration declares the object as const. So that is also important for us to know. So getting back to this, a const expert function can only call other const expert functions if evaluation happens in a const expert context. So I've got three examples up here. This is a const expr function that might call new. It might do an allocation. New is not a thing that you can do in const expr, but this is perfectly acceptable on lines 9 and 10. So line 10 is going to execute the new, but we're not trying to do it in a const expr context. Line 11, trying to execute the new, but have it in a const expr context, is a fail. This fails at compile time. Make sense? Any questions? Yes. Go ahead. You have a question? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Before you leave. Yes. Oh, I, I just said, I asked the three if you had done this thing and your client could do something that you did with the, 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 the
you see three. Yeah, if i is less than three, then I return i plus two. If i equals three, then it's going to fall through and it's going to do the allocation of new pointer on line five. It, it's okay on line 10 because this happens in a non const expert context. It is not okay on line 11 because it's trying to do it in a const expert context. Certainly. So, const expert, we try harder. This is an old uh, car rental ad from Avis, but it's fun. So, we just, uh, just talked about the fact that const expert implies inline, but it is a little bit more than that. So, um, my laptop's a little slow, but this will pop up in a second. This is a implementation of a rational class that I've been playing with that is a const expert enabled, theoretically. It's not uh, at the moment here. So we have our operator plus. We are compiling with 03 and GCC 7.2. And we are adding together a rational of 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, 1 over 5, and we're returning the denominator from main. So this is pretty straightforward. We're taking advantage of the newly added in C++17 standard LCM, least common multiple, handy function. Is this clear what we're doing here? I am going to change my operator plus so that it is now declared const expert. And this is the only change that I've made to the code. The compiler fully evaluates this at compile time. So it's worth noting on line 15, this is not assigning this value in a const expert context. We haven't changed anything except for the definition of our class. And the compiler said, ah, oh, that's all right, I know what to do. But we said that Const expert implies in line, so maybe it's just the compiler saying, well, because that's an inline function, I'm going to try to evaluate it harder or whatever. So I've made it in line here instead of const expert, and we're back to exactly where we were. Comments? Digesting lunch? Digesting const expert? So what I learned is that this is actually really hard to get this kind of neat trick to affect real-world code. So now I'm going to talk about the impacts of const expert. And like I said, no surprise, this is impacts of applying it to ChiScript. Most of you were here yesterday. You know this. It's my embedded scripting engine for C++. Supports lots of compilers and lots of operating systems. And is header only, which will matter for this talk. And it's about 25,000 lines of C++. I don't recall if I mentioned this yesterday, but at least for the sake of YouTube, I consider that to be an important number because that says that it's slightly bigger than trivial and small enough that I can keep the structure of most of the system in my head. So it's easy, easy, for me to go through every line of it and apply best practices and const expert and that kind of thing. It's an evolving project, and we've got lots of templates, which comes back to the fact that it's header only. This is an example of uh, embedded ChiScript. Uh, this is standalone. You don't need to link anything that compiles and runs. OK, so I started going through and applying const expert to ChiScript everywhere that I could reasonably without changing any code. So I ended up with things like this. This is my type info object. ChiScript, being a scripting engine, has to do lots of runtime type comparisons. So I have const expert these things. Like I, I, 
I can make this constructor const expr, that's no problem, because everything being passed into it is what kind of type? Come on, louder. <laughs> Literal. You should say it loud enough so it picks up on the mic and gets recorded. Let's try for that next time. So everything's literal, and then I make um, my type info object itself literal by making all of its constructors const expr, and it doesn't, it has a trivial destructor, it's all good. So I did that, and then I have on my type info object things like this, which is, you know, is it a const, is it a reference, is it a void type, is it arithmetic, whatever. I just made all the accessors const expr. And then I had other things, like this to string, which takes an operator. This operator is an enumeration, and it indexes into this and returns the const car literal for what that iterator, or what, for what that, um, excuse me, what that enumeration refers to and returns the string. So these are just a handful of examples, but I went through and did this kind of thing throughout the whole code base where it didn't require modifying the code at all, just sprinkling const expr around where I could. So you might perhaps logically think that const expr in this case would help with the startup time of the application because it's able to calculate more things at compile time than at runtime. So we're going to put up these options here. Who thinks, let's, let's guess for in the room what we feel, the startup performance of ChiScript, which involves building a few data structures and then parsing the ChiScript standard library. Who thinks that this would have been like a 5% performance improvement in the, in the startup time? That's, it's, it's actually kind of really hard to count in this room, but that's some number of people. Like, good feel, I'm thinking like 50 or something. Yes, one of them is true <laughs> on this slide. So uh, who would say 10%? Maybe about the same people that said 5%. Is it the same exact people who raised your hand for 5%? <laughs> okay, 15? Okay, that's less people, 20%. And almost no one's willing to bet on that one. Okay. The answer is 10% on both GCC and Clang. Did you <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have any t-shirts or stickers left to give out prizes at the moment. So I needed to know, because after all, I am preparing a talk to give to all of you, where this performance came from. Like, was it just additive? Did every little thing, you know, have a little, pers uh, little extra help? So I started with this, which I thought was my most likely candidate. This is my position. Um, this tracks the position of where I am in the script while I'm parsing. And this is something that everything that it's taking is a, is a pointer to a const car, or it's iterating integers, incrementing in integers, that is, excuse me. And then I have one, one method here, the str method on line four, that cannot be made const expr because it is, its return type is not literal. You, you really could, let's, again. <laughs> it's not literal, thanks. That's fun. Okay, <laughs> so, so I made this const expr just added const expr, right? Because we're still talking about the simple application of const expr, where I sprinkled const expr around where I could. So the question is, considering that this is used for literally every character that is parsed, and remember that it implies inline, um, yes, remember that const expr implies inline, and that Const expert tries harder. How much did this affect the performance of my code? And I don't have the numbers up there, but um, does anyone just want to guess, yell out a number, keeping this interactive? Anyone? Huh? 
10%, because we're talking about the 10% after all, right? 2%? 0%? 0%? I literally saw no difference at all. It changed nothing. And like my most important structure during parsing. So I thought, surely it must be here in my type info object because I have to do these type info comparisons for every single function dispatch to figure out which function to call when I'm doing an overload uh, set resolution to, with the parameter types that are passed in. So all of this is const expr, and this is used like everywhere in ChiScript, everywhere. How much effect did this have on the code base? Excuse me, did I compile with LTO? No, but it is a header-only library. Um, and these tests, to be fair, though, are linking two object files together. Um, LTO might have had an impact, but no, I didn't test LTO. What's that? Yeah, it's header-only, yeah. So did we have a guess? 1%? You're hoping for something. I'm still getting zero back here. Anyone want to make any other guess between zero and 1%? <laughs> now, if you were in my talk yesterday, I mentioned that when I'm measuring performance, I'm actually, well, no, actually, I mentioned this after the talk. Um, I'm using Volgrind, or Volgrind, that counts the number of CPU instructions executed. That is how I am measuring this. So that I know is not a perfect measurement of performance, however, I think for these particular cases, we can see that I was able to measure exactly the same number of CPU instructions in both cases with a binary size that was exactly the same. Okay. I'm on a mission. <laughs> I'm like, I'm starting to get mad. What is the compiler doing to my code? Where is the performance coming from? I have to figure this out. I'm on my mission. So I go through each of those trivial changes that I made to try to figure out which one had an impact. 97 changes across 13 files. We're now going to go through them all together. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's unnecessary. I will jump to the conclusion that after I don't know, it was something like two hours of searching through this. Again, like I said, 25,000 lines of code. It's, I, I know the code base very well. I've been maintaining it for a long time. I have my static string class, and if you've seen the context for all the things, you've seen a reference to this class. Um, to me, this is more meaningful than string view, because string view is a pointer to a thing that you don't know where it came from. This can only be constructed with a reference to an array which I'm, is not perfect, but I think it is a very good way of saying that this is a const character literal. This thing is used when doing all of my comparisons to say, like, was it, a, um, was it an operator match or was it uh, some sort of built-in keyword match during parsing? I make this const expr. Just these three lines of code, three, seven, and nine, resulted in approximately all of the performance changes that I saw in the startup time of ChiScript. So I think, you know, this is practical const expr. I don't really have like a conclusion to this, but this is kind of like a, you know, you don't, you don't really know where the gains are going to come from. But I also noticed memory usage during compile time actually went down by 8% when I applied const expert across everything. And I am not a compiler writer, so I do not have an answer for this, but I was able to measure it multiple times and it seemed pretty conclusive.
So now I went through, hello? Now I went through and I said, I need to modify the functions that I can to be const expr that weren't previously. So like I said, TypeScript scripting engine. I have code that needs to do things like compare to see if a token that was parsed belongs to a set of known keywords and or, or an operator, something like that. So we're going to do this again as something of a group exercise. I've got this function that says, uh, this is very simplified, okay? So I don't have an actual list of tokens here, but let's say that each of these characters in this string on line five is one of the tokens that I want to match against. So this is a simplified version of what I need to do. And I've got my static const get tokens function that is returning a static conch string. And I did this to avoid allocating the string every single time that I needed to check to see if something was a token. So the question is, can has token be made const expr as it stands? No. Why not? <laughs> what was the what was that? <laughs> For reasons? Two reasons. <laughs> because it is, because get tokens is not const expr. Is that what you're saying? Okay, that's reason why. And because it's got what in it? It has a static variable in it, but more importantly, what kind of static variable? A non literal type. So, Again, slow laptop, but it gives us pacing and time to take a drink of water. So we had this question, can this be made const expr? And if we attempt to make it const expr, then we, so we have to start at the beginning, right? So we're going to make get tokens const expr. We try to do that, but we've got the static as you mentioned, and we've got the fact that we're working with non-literal types. So what is a string-like thing that's not a string that we might return from our get tokens? A what? A static, like, oh, oh, my class, static string. That's a great point. I did not do that here. What is something else that's kind of like a string? String literals? Uh, a char array, yes. Um, string, no, eh, yeah, string view. String view, string view we'll talk about more later. Um, I'm gonna go with this. And C++ 17 stood array is fully const expert enabled. Well, almost fully const expert enabled. And so we can use it here. So I swapped out my std string with a std array. Uh, to me, that made sense for this code. So I've got my std array that I'm returning from get tokens. And now, well, the, the comment there is kind of giving this away. But who does not know, well, maybe I should put this the way other way around, who does know what magic statics are? Oh, okay. So like three people know what magic statics are. That's good. That gives me more to talk about. So in C++ 11, the initialization of a static variable is guaranteed to happen in a thread safe manner. This was not true before C++ 11, but Clang and GCC both implemented that behavior before C++11 anyhow. Visual Studio was the only compiler that had to catch up to it. So we have this on line 11. I am making this a static const auto A. And with a little bit of luck, we can see this test right here. 
where we have this guard variable for the static that is being tested. So every single time line 11 is executed, you have a runtime cost of checking to see if the static has already been initialized. If it has not, then it must initialize it. And if it has, then it can pass over it. But either way, this must be done in a thread-safe manner, so it has to be an atomic check. So this is not trivial. It does incur a cost, and it adds to the generated code. So in the last example, we had not yet added const expert to it, but we have now added const expert to our actual get tokens method, uh, function. And I, this still, there we go. So in this particular case, GCC said, oh, okay, this is a const expert thing, and even though I've got the static const, it's no longer doing the, the uh, magic static check. And it has generated considerably less code again. And now I feel like I should point out that smaller assembly does not necessarily mean faster assembly, but it's also, it's good for conversation. You can mostly assume that less assembly is better, mostly, when you're looking at Compile Explorer. So we've got our get tokens is now const expert, returning a standard array. And now we're still trying to make has token const expert. That's the ultimate goal of this exercise. So then what is next that we need to do? And yeah, this is the same example again. So what is the next thing that we want to do here? It, on our road to make has token const expert. Const expert find? Yeah. So we would like to think that we can just make has token const expert. No, no, no. Oh, right. Sorry. We missed a step. We wanted to make a const expert here so that we're getting our tokens as const expert thing. Which, yes, is good. OK. OK. So now we want to make has token const expert, and that brings back the last comment. This can't work because find, std find, is not const expert. Most of the standard algorithms are not const expert, which is unfortunate. But if we write our own version of find with a simple inline for loop, which is allowed, you can see how much assembly the compiler is now generating. Do <laughs> on the topic of less assembly is better, I guess if your entire program goes away. <laughs> Although, do, do we know why the whole program has gone away here? What? It's, it's not used. But more importantly, const expert is implying in line, and it's not used. Because otherwise, it would still generate the symbols for the function. And I think I can prove that for the sake of this. Right. So we actually get a function body there because it is not in line. And if we make it in line, then it goes away. These are some of the useful tricks that you might want to use if you're making const, if you're making uh, compiler explorer examples to like send to your coworkers or something, and you'd be like, well, the actual, you know, the the function body doesn't matter because you want to show that the whole thing was inlined into another function call. Then you can just like put it in an anonymous namespace or mark it inline or something and prevent it from going there. But this has real consequence. We have now actually executed it. And these are inline, and they are const expert. 
and we can see that the code in main is now a very simple assembly loop over all of the characters in the string, checking to see if the token is there. So the compiler said, cool, I know what to do with this now. It's considerably less code being generated. Removed the cost of the magic statics that we had originally and everything. This is good, right? Yes? Mostly? All right. So one question I have here is, why didn't I use string view? S string view came up. Why didn't we use string view? What's that? Not, not const expr. Uh, it is const expr. Anyone else? OK. C14. Uh, well, yeah, that's true. I am using C17. Um, it is supposed to be const expr, I guess I should have said. I'm doing all these examples with GCC 7.2. It's constructor for string view that takes a const car star is not const expr, but that has been fixed and shrunk at the last check that I made. So we're getting there. But this example that I tried to walk us through, this perfectly sums up my experience with applying const expr across ChiScript. Broken standard library implementations, poor standard library support for algorithms. So we couldn't use std find. We couldn't use string view, even though we would have liked to have used both of those. In a sense, const expr becomes viral. I'm not saying this is bad. OK, or maybe. Does anyone here think that viral const usage is bad? No? We all agree. We, we all were at Kate's keynote this morning, most of us probably. You know, using const and using it correctly, this is a good thing. We don't want to make everything mutable. We don't want to cast away const. So this cascade of const expert, I don't think this is a bad thing. It Definitely resulted in some code simplification for me, reduction of dynamic allocations, startup performance, and runtime performance. So I should mention this. Uh, the, uh, one of the things that came out of the const expert all the things talk that I gave with Ben is that Ben wrote const expert in practice and submitted that to Albuquerque, which hopefully someone there is reading it, has, has read it at the conference, or excuse me, at the um, at the standards meeting that's going on right now, right? Yes, OK, right now. So, and it says by Ben Dean and Jason Turner, but you know, full disclosure, Ben totally wrote it. I added like literally one word I changed in the paper. So let's get back to this topic of static const and the cost of, of using um, magic statics. So we've got in this code, this is a very small block of looking to see if a string that was passed in my opper operator on line one is one of the known operators that exist. So we're talking equals equals, not equals, that kind of thing, less than. So what might I do here? to no longer have to pay the cost, potentially, of having my, uh, my magic static look up. We want to make line to what? We want to make the variable not static const, but const expr. It's the point of the talk. So we make it const expr. And then we say, OK, this seemed like a good move. We just proved to ourselves that we are saving the cost of doing the, the magic static, and we know that the compiler can do more inlining, and everything is good. So let's say, what kind of runtime improvement or did I see, again, with GCC 7.2? We've been doing all these examples with GCC 7.2. So who says 1%? Yeah, like, eh. And one person, three people. Who says 5%? OK, who says 10%? Who says something else? 
lots of hands on something else. What is the something else answer? Does anyone want to throw out a something else? Yes, Guy. Oh, no, but context for variable declaration is implied as const. We, weren't you reading all the standard E's at the beginning? <laughs> yeah, so the comment was because it was, it's not const, the compiler might be op not optimizing it as much effectively. Right. So anyone else want to throw out a, uh, a, a comment? Did it get worse? It got worse by 300%. <laughs> it completely <laughs> destroyed the startup performance. This is one of those things when I'm going back through, like, well, obviously, Constex made everything better, and I'm clearly writing an excellent talk right here. And I'm looking at my graph. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I have more work to do. <clears throat> so any idea why? I think Guy actually touched on it. Um, you lose the static, effectively. You know, I find this troubling because you told the compiler it's a const expert variable. I want you to calculate this at compile time. That's why it's const expert. It is not necessarily calculating it at compile time. So let's click on this line and see if, yeah, it's, we don't even have a direct here we go. We can actually see in the assembly right here on line 10, and this trivial example that we were looking at earlier, that the compiler is actually having to copy the token data into that local variable on every execution. And um, this is GCC. Clang doesn't do this. Clang does better. I don't know what Visual Studio does in this particular case. So if we compare it instead to this option, where we make it a static const, then the compiler does not have this copy of data into that local variable on every execution. But yes? Do we have magic const? There's a magic static. Magic static? Um, on the last one? Yeah. Uh, well, this one, we do not have a magic static because the compiler is saying that's a static const object and it is optimizing it away. So then we want to make has token const expert again because we're going back to that. And someone else already pointed out that a const expert function cannot have a static const a static object in it. So we can't do this. So I'm like, you know, I can't, I can't say make everything const expert because it will destroy your performance, right? Like I have to come up with an actual solution to this. So if I move my operator matches object outside of the function, I can make it static and const expert. So the compiler generates this code at compile time, and it's static. We don't have the cost of a magic static, and this is working. Right? Does anyone have a problem with this before I move a slide forward? I move the static outside the function. This is, um, from the standpoint of this code sample, I am missing the class that all this lives in. So I made it a, cl a static const expert class member variable. So, but we're kind of been straddling standards to this point. ChiScript is a header-only library. Does anyone see a problem with this code? What's that? Hey, I have to put the static somewhere. Except for the fact that constexpr implies in line. 
and in C++17, we have inline variables. So in C++17, this is all good, but if you're pre-C++17, you'll have linkage problems here. Um, but by the time I am done with these changes of moving my objects that are static const local variables into static const expr member variables, I'm now at 20% better startup times for the ChiScript engine. Um, and a very painful regression <laughs> that took me hours to figure out. And we're still talking in the about 75 to 8% less memory usage during um, compile time. So I've learned while I was applying this that there's certain benefits to applying constexpr. Take, for example, this. Constructors aren't functions. Does everyone know that, by the way? It's impossible to get a pointer to a, con uh, to a constructor. It can be like incredibly frustrating in some cases. But C++11 and 14 lambdas make this relatively easy. But in ChiScript, I need to expose constructors to the scripting engine so that when you, if you want to create an object at script time, you can. So I have this function, which creates a shared pointer and returns it back out of a particular type by forwarding the parameters to the constructor of the thing. Does everyone like this code? Do you, do you live in a world where shared pointer is a code smell yet? Yes, I'm getting some nods, yes. So we have, again, the question of how might we make this const expr? And C++17 gives us a very easy solution to this. We can just return the object because we have a guarantee in C++17 that this is not a copy or a move. It is something else. We know that the object that is created here will be returned perfectly with zero cost. And I would like to point out that every single compiler that I've tried that was released after 1995 does this optimization anyhow, so it's not like we're really asking anything new from our compilers in C++17. But now I'm able to make this, this function const expr. And uh, so const expr, applying const expr helped me find this design flaw in my code as I was going through and saying, how can I make this const expr? But then we also have an issue where const expr can sometimes try too hard. Does everyone follow Kriester Waldorfsson? And I know I'm pronouncing his name poorly. Um, on Twitter or his blog. Anyone know who I'm talking about? He's, he's like the only GCC developer I know. Are there any GCC developers in the room? No, no one, no one, no one? Okay. So we had him on CBPcast. And uh, he recently blogged about this a little example of simply making this const expr variable and having an array of bit sets of size 100,000 with 100,000 in them. And the point was, if you did this not in a std array, but you did this in a C style array, this code compiled like that. You put it in a std array, all of a sudden it uses nine gigs of RAM to compile these three lines of code. So I have a link to the blog that you can't see, but you can see that it's blue. It's a link. <laughs> so, well, you can look up his blog easily enough from his name there. This is his conclusion. The const expr keyword does not mean that the compiler must evaluate at compile time. It only means that it can be evaluated at the compile time if the result is used where constant expressions are allowed. And this is an interesting point also that apparently Visual Studio's const expr implementation is not, uh, shall we say, perfect, um, and that it does things at runtime evaluation if it didn't absolutely have to use it in a const expr context, it will still do it at runtime. So. 
Visual Studio is not doing anything incorrect. It's just not doing necessarily the, uh, the most performant thing. So Krister says, I had assumed that compile time evaluation is not needed in this case, but GCC seems to always evaluate const expert at compile time when instantiating templates. So this is an interesting, hopefully will be fixed issue in GCC at some point, but something to be aware of. So all these examples that we walked through where I showed with GCC that const expert tries harder and can result in more efficient code, there might be a downside to it, but it does really help the compiler optimize it and do more code folding, constant folding. So in C17, Lambda's um, call operator, operator paren, is const expert by default if possible. So let's let that sink in for a moment. The compiler knows what the rules are for const expert. If it can be const expert, it automatically makes it const expert for lambda. Who here thinks that it should do that for all functions? Oh, come on, only like seven people? All right, well, oh, well I just got like a changing of the guard with the hands that were raised. But the point is this enables lambdas for const expert you context. Standard array is const expert enabled except for the method fill. I have absolutely no idea why not. That's one of the things that was in the paper that Ben submitted. String view is fully const expert, but major compilers still have issues with it. Of the C++ standard algorithms, only min max, min max, min element, max element, and min max element are const expert. Those are the only algorithms that are. I have no idea why those were chosen and not the others. Um, we've already proven that most of them can be made const expert. And we've, uh, so optional and variant are not const expert enabled, but probably could be. And pair and tuple are almost 100% const expert except for operator equals and except for swap. So, Again, we've got these utilities, begin, end, c, begin, c, end, const are all const expert. Um, and then next, previous distance and advance are all const, uh, const expert, swap and exchange are not. So my conclusion here is that C17 has many holes in its const expert support, but we need to not underestimate it. The fact that std array can be used in a const expert context is absolutely huge. That enables us for doing the containers and data structures that we might want to do in a const expert kind of context, and this is good. So I have a couple of guidelines here real quick uh, from what I learned. This is our const expert version of all of. How would we like to test this? We can. Test it like this with an assertion or using catch. Is Phil here? No. Well, um, is this good? Good way to test our const expert method or our const expert algorithm, excuse me? No. Why? It's not being evaluated in a const expert context. So I still, I just love that when we get into the world of const expert, we can end up with code that if it compiles, we know that it passed all of our tests. And I find that really cool. So anyone want to say why we would not want to make our operator equals in this version of pair const expert? Just like what's the downside to using const expert? Well, so const expert implies in line, so that means that it requires the definition to be available, and so we effectively have made this, uh, you know, like we're in the world of like header-only kinds of things. We must make the definition available to the compiler if it's const expert, but for this particular thing, which is a pair, it's true already because it's a template type. We already had to have the definition available. 
And if we do make it constexpr, we're potentially getting better performance. We're, we're providing the compiler and the user with more semantic information. And I think this is really the most important takeaway, is as we've seen through our examples of trying to apply constexpr, the biggest headache that we have is trying to use standard algorithms, standard library things that are not currently constexpr. So I say enable constexpr everywhere you can so that you enable your library for more use and more context that you didn't consider. And we've discussed this. To me, um, even with this caveat of the compiler not necessarily being able to optimize the local variable that's constexpr, I think constexpr should be the new static const. Like you're going through, if you see static const in your code, your goal should be to make that value constexpr. And you should then go through and do whatever it takes to make the functions that initialize that data constexpr. And you will then, I mean, as we're talking real savings, real performance here that I saw across TriScript. It avoids our magic static cost and it avoids runtime initialization. So um, that's the conclusion. Again, this is me, um, and that's how you can get in contact with me. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. What you mentioned earlier with virtual functions may not have any constexpr. Virtual functions may not be constexpr. My question is, why not? The question is, why not? I don't know why not. Um, I, I mean, I can come up with. I, I accept that if a virtual dispatch needs to happen, you might not know the final type of the thing at compile time. So I accept that. But to me, that implies then, using that logic, that final methods should be allowed to be constexpr because you know it's not possible that there's another implementation that could be coming along of it. Um, I have not like submitted a proposal for this because I don't know the full implications or anything. Yeah. But this is not just a fair question, but that you have this ability to go to an object and yes. actually try type and see there's an object that's like type and that's the one I want to talk to. You can enable that. You can go and grab that. You yes. Can so why would this be any different? Yeah, so why would it be any different than the compiler inlining something that it already has visibility into? It's a good question. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the decision was that was made there. But I will tell you a trick. GCC has a bug. It, if you say virtual blah, blah, blah function, constexpr, it says it errors. Virtual functions can't be constexpr. If you say constexpr function name override or final, it doesn't catch that that's not supposed to be constexpr in that case, and it will let you make it constexpr. <laughs> so um, it, it does seem to be entirely possible. And <laughs> yes, there has been a bug report filed on GCC for that, so maybe they'll fix it. But it's, yeah, it clearly is not impossible. <laughs> yeah, it could definitely be useful. Uh, yes? Oh, microphone. Oh, that takes the fun out of it. <laughs> oh, the microphone's not even on. All right, go ahead. Uh, when you did the get, when you naively added constexpr, when I did you go any, any function that was compiling the constexpr was easier? So were you trying to look at the whole call stack? When I na naively applied constexpr, did I look for any function that could accept it, or did I look at the full context of it? For the case of constexpr, so the, the no accept answer is different, right? I'm sorry, I meant to ask constexpr. You no, know, no, you did ask constexpr, but I'm just saying I gave a similar talk, but about no accept two weeks ago. So just for the record, the no accept answer is different. For constexpr, anything that could be constexpr, I just made it constexpr. Because there's, there's no cost, no loss to it, particularly in a header-only library. Constexpr, for constexpr, I sprinkled it around until I saw what, what happened, what fell out. Yes? So the question was, why do I need to manually mark it if the compiler can figure out that it was const and it could have inlined it or whatever already? Compilers are really smart and they do awesome things and they do that 
75, 80% of the time. Using const expert and communicating to future readers of your code, communicating to the compiler that this is definitely something that I know can be, that can be done at compile time, I want you to do it at compile time, that gets you to the 100% case. And that, I think, is more, it's better for everyone uh, from a readability and you know, understanding of what the code's doing standpoint. I think so. Yeah, so maybe, you know, as the compilers get more advanced, things will be automatically decided by them in a few years. But I still think it's, I, I don't have a problem with going through and making everything context for where I can. Yes? Yeah, so if you market const expert and you change something so it can no longer be const expert, it's the exact same thing we've already learned how to do in const methods, right? You make everything const where you can, and if it doesn't make sense to make it const, or if the, if the function changes so much that it can't be const anymore, the actual use of this function did, you're in the exact same case that you are with const expert. You're like, well, it's, it's, now, it's now a different function. If that changed the, the use case of it because someone was using it in a const expert context, then you would have broken their code just as if you had removed const from it. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, let's go to this side of the room. There is no conditional const expert. That, um, th there is discussions on how to do things like that that are hopefully being discussed this week at the committee meeting. But I believe we are officially out of time. Is that correct? So thank you, everyone.